Got it. Oh, you beauty. Yes. Don't come off, don't come off. Wow. Oh my goodness. Straight away target species. And it's a beauty as well. That is a fantastic black bream. Look at the size of that. Yep. That is another fantastic black bream. Another absolute stunner. These are the two black bream that I caught the other day on the boat. And you can see all I've done is I've just opened up the belly cavity and taken the guts out. Now it's come the time to take the scales off. Now you can do that one or two ways. You can either use a knife, but I use a spoon. Now you can flick them all off like that, but usually fires scales everywhere. So what I like to do is if you can put it inside of a pail of water, you then use, see where it's taking the scales off? If you do it, they just flick everywhere. Whereas if you do it underwater, all the scales end up underwater. You just need to be careful when you're doing this because every single one of these has got a spike on it. Those have got a spike, those have got a spike. They're covered in spikes. So just be careful when you're grinding, when you're flicking the scales off that you don't catch yourself with these spikes. You can see the difference there now that I've taken all these scales off this side. This is what the difference is. Like that to like that. Well, there's the difference. So all of these scales have been taken off. Now that I've scaled both of these fish, you can see, look, all of the scales are all left in the water. Right, I gutted and scaled the bream and I brought them round to Jim's. Hello, well, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, just uh, wearing my new, new top, a Christmas present from Hannah and John. Uh, we have these uh, two lovely bream and they really are superb eating. Uh, this one I'm going to just cut the fins and the t tail off, slash it and make up a tandoori marinade and we'll let that uh, sit for an hour or so. And uh, this one we'll again cut the fins and the tail off and we're going to bake that one uh, in a sort of Italian style with multicoloured cherry tomatoes. Uh, so, a spoon and we'll make the a sort of tandoori marinade. Yeah. Natural yoghurt. Uh, there's about four spoons. So this is hot paprika so it'll give us some spicy as well as the colour garam masala nothing else required uh, oh lemon juice yes half a fresh lemon squeeze that in right that's the marinade done let's tend to the fish yeah my yeah fish cheers Taking things off like that, there's no meat to be had on these fins and by making it slightly smaller it fits onto a smaller plate. Be careful when you're doing these because they are very very sharp and spiky. There we go. Just going to put a bit of cook. Yes, this is sunflower oil. Just turn the uh, fish over. Fits perfectly in there, no? uh, Yes, it's good. Just going to make some cuts down the side. 
that's so marinade gets into the give that a good and there we go oh. sorry uh -huh. do as they let no, do on the telly Ah, right, just going to leave that on the side. I'm not going to bother refrigerating it. We'll just keep t turning that. And before popping it in the oven, I'll give it a good, a good season. To go with the, the bream we're baking with the ch cherry tomatoes, I'm just going to do some Spanish style potatoes. My, my version of patatas uh, bravas. Uh, there's three medium-sized baking potatoes I chopped up earlier. To those I'm going to add that very roughly chopped garlic, smoked paprika. I like to be quite generous so that's about three teaspoons. A good two inches of tomato puree, olive oil, no, nothing too fancy in the olive oil front, sea salt, white pepper and for some flavour. And a spoon and we're just going to coat everything. The oven is on and preheated to 200 degrees C. I've got a tray in there which is hot. Uh, there, that's pretty well mixed. Let's get the tray out. A oh, hot tray from the oven. Good slug of olive oil. Uh, I'll use my cloth this time. A dry tea towel. Uh, just run that around into the corners. Spread those out. Uh, right, we'll pop those in. They'll take uh, about 40 45 minutes. Just going to prepare the onions and tomatoes for uh, the baked fish. So these are two uh, medium sized onions. So again, I've got a baking dish here, which is from the oven. It is hot. Into there we'll put plenty of onion. Thyme, a good pinch. I, thyme just goes so well, well with practically Everything. I'm just going to put the smallest amount of smoked paprika in there. But there, that's just a, an essence. Uh, there's a tray of um, multicoloured ch cherry tomatoes from a local store. And did a fantastic crop of tomatoes last year, didn't you? Great, did indeed. <laughs> These will be a little flavourless. So to counter that, I'm going to, oh dear, there's a, a, a wrong one. So we'll, we'll recycle that, we'll see you next year, before I finish. And finely ground black pepper. I was considering putting some aubergine, very finely chopped aubergine, what do you think? Go for you. Yeah, let's put a bit of finely chopped aubergine in. I'm going to put these into roast for about 10 minutes just to give them, especially the, give the onion a head start. And then we'll put the fish in the middle. Fish in the middle, let's make a bit of space. Potatoes will want to twiddle. And we'll just. Is that the culinary term? Uh, tw 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 twiddle. twiddle. Uh. Hmm. Right. That's ready for stage two. So let's twiddle the potatoes. They smell fine. Mm. They look lovely. 
They've not cooked yet, unfortunately. Right, I'll put those back. Lift these out. Now, what I'm going to do is a good glug of white wine. We could always put a little more in if need be. Uh, the other half of the fresh lemon. That's a Pinot Grigio. Any other type of wines you'd, or you well, specifically some, that something, um, uh, nothing sweet. Something on well, whatever you've got open, really would be fine. Right, back into the oven for a just let that cook down and reduce slightly. I've given the fish a couple of terms. Um, I know I used some garam masala, but I'm just going to sprinkle a little cumin onto there. Should have done it earlier. Hey ho, doesn't some ginger through. And then we'll turn it again. I do love the smell of fresh cooked ginger. Not too much, because it's... Then leave that to shock. And, uh, well, I think I would... John, actually, what do we do? Let's be bold, shall we? A little bit of salt on there. There's a question. Do you, do you feel like you need, you need less salt for a fish from the sea than you would for a freshwater fish? <sighs> I, um, I don't think it will have any bearing. It's just I use salt as a flavour enhancer. It's not. I never want to taste the salt. Because it's not like when you you're cooking. Um, mussels or clams or something like that because they're the, the, the brine that comes off them is really salty it, isn't it it is indeed um, uh, some people love the t taste of uh, salt I wouldn't um, advocate that as a lifestyle choice but now we know the, the harm of it uh, right let's pop him in the there we go pop him in the bottom a minute. That's just had five minutes to settle itself down. A bit of tomato puree just to enhance the cherry tomatoes. Let's just stir that in. We'll just trim this up to. Same as before, just trimming it off. Uh, All of the fins and spines. Thank you. If you just pull that up for me, John. Yeah, I have John, but you you will have to find your own glamorous assistant. Uh, let's pop him into the oven. Now, hopefully, uh, fish and the potatoes will be ready at the s same time. Okay, uh, f fish have been in for twenty minutes, so we should be about there. And. You know what I'm going to do now. Burn your mouth. So let's burn my lips. So, small blade. Uh, just, that's resting up against the bones. I can feel it's done because it's lovely and tender. And, yeah, yeah just about there. Um, I've turned the grill on and it's preheated. Uh, just going to crisp the skin up. Uh, these will be done. Again, a small knife, just give that a, a wash. Oh, yes, look at that. Nice and soft. Yes, and uh, everything is ready in perfect unison. Hannah's busy cheating at the crossword using her phone. I'm not cheating. Just because you couldn't get them <laughs> doesn't mean I cheated. Uh, you, you get to that stage where you've got to go to the phone, otherwise you remain ignorant. I just chopped a little... I was right... Oh, sorry. Uh, what were you right with? It's a set, but it's C-E-T-E. -E. 
knew it was an SET. The SETI of badges. Mm -hmm. uh, the colours on that look fantastic. Yes, they do indeed. That's just a little uh, ch chopped parsley. So it's practically there. So we'll finish that again. The grill is preheated, so it's nice and hot. That's a bit close to the bars. We'll come down the one. So we'll give him a couple of minutes. I, we're going to have some naan bread to go with that. So the, Break myself. Runs in the family, doesn't it? What have you break yourself? Nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, right, a scant five minutes. Um, just turn the grill off. There is our flattery. You know, try to step back. Fish. So, I think we'll make a We'll have this like as a little starter with some uh, peshwari nans I just uh, griddled. And here is some natural yogurt with a, a teaspoon of uh, mint sauce into it. Oh, right, fresh it. lemon over the top. Save some uh, for the underside. You weren't going to miss that bone, were you? Uh, no, no, fortunately, they're a good size. Bit of. Oh, you can feel your way down, and all the bones are a good size. Yeah, they're all. It's not like a little bone that you're going to miss. These are uh, all. Uh, uh, like darning needles. Yeah, like a toothpick. This is why I've always said with the smaller fish like bream, baking is better than filleting it. Uh, because you yes. can pick through and you can get every single bit of fish. You could do do exactly the same if you filleted this off first and marinate the fillets yeah. and then just uh, quickly grill them. Uh, Hannah? Thank you. As he's taking both sides off, you can see it's just like a proper Tom and Jerry fish skeleton moment, isn't it? All right, now we can lift all of that away. Push it to the side of the cooking dish. The skin is all but disappeared. Uh, I always think this is quite comical when the bones come out like that. Uh, yes, it's, uh, just, well, it's detached from the head, unfortunately, yeah. but it's a real t Tom and Jerry moment. It's just gorgeous. Isn't it? That's uh, lovely, isn't it? Uh, mm. The flavour in itself, the fish is delicious, but mm. that, a little bit of yoghurt and mint as well. It's uh, perfect. Important not to go too heavy handed with the spices yeah, because otherwise you won't get the flavour of the fish which is on its own is divine now we're out with the oven now uh, and I can't <laughs> you won't be able to stop it it smells absolutely amazing little squeeze uh, lemon just to finish that are you trying to pinch the I just potatoes? Like, no, I went to pick it up to put it next to it. Oh, and it's I see. Really hot. Uh, what is it? <laughs> we were just discussing there about the eyes. Some people might might choose to take the eyes out beforehand, but it, it doesn't it doesn't harm the dish at all. Leaving them in, does it? Yeah. Uh, there's Thank you. Our Spanish potatoes. Uh, so that's. the shop this morning John was like I didn't even know you could get Spanish potatoes what are they like and I, was like, no. I expected it to be like King Edward's or something like that but there's a Spanish one uh, we'll peel the skin back and see if we can have a, a bone free we were just discussing then 
with that little dish we had as a starter. Would probably be better if we had filleted the fish first and then marinated the fillets so we didn't have to contend with the old the, bone. That the fish has been cooked perfectly, isn't it? Smell, the smell from that is unreal. Um, let's do something. Like the fish. I can't even, you can't even explain it. It doesn't smell like what people think the fish There's a rich, like. rich smell from the tomato and the onions in there. We, at the same time, you can still no, smell the... the fish. Like we, if we eat fresh fish. A fresh fish never doesn't have any odour. It should just s smell like the sea. The colours are amazing as well. Mm. As Jim's taken the top two fillets off, he just pulled the backbone out the middle so you can get the bottom two fillets. And, uh, I can't wait to get amongst this. This is it smells absolutely amazing. The mouths like, actively celebrate. Right, Tom. There you go. Thank you very much. Right, well, just about finished. That was absolutely delicious. Hannah's just picking away through the last of the potatoes. Both of those dishes, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. both of those dishes were absolutely delicious. But uh, you said you favoured the second one, Dave. Yeah, they're like Spanish type one. The, the, it was more of a meal, but the first one made quite an interesting. Yeah. Two different starter. ways. One was like a little a little pick at starter and the other one was a sit down meal, but both of them were absolutely delicious. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, 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 like and to the uh, uh, cook comes the joy of washing up. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you bye. later. Bye bye. You go to eat your vegetables. <laughs> 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 <laughs>